The sad reality of gaming on Linux is that in the majority of cases you will be playing Windows games through compatibility layers. Thanks to tools like Lutris and Proton, this is easier than ever. And in a large number of cases, these tools offer a click and play experience. That said, some games are not on Steam or don't have a Lutris installer. So you're going to have to get your hands dirty with plain old wine in the command line. Setting up wine prefixes is known to be a bit of a pain for new users. So in this video I want to try and make the whole process of setting up a wine prefix and running a game in it as simple as possible and give you a general procedure you can follow every time you want to install a game. Now let's get to it. First, you need to install Wine and its dependencies. Luckily, Gloria Segral has made a nice guide on this for a number of popular distros. Just copy and paste the commands for your distro in the terminal to install Wine and its dependencies. When you follow these instructions, you will install Wine itself and Wine Tricks, along with everything else Wine needs to work properly. You can also compile custom versions of Wine but regular wine staging from your distro's repositories will work in the vast majority of cases. I will cover custom wine versions in a different video. For now, stick to what's in your distro's repositories. Now, let us create our wine prefix. A wine prefix is a directory which contains a virtual Windows installation. Of course, you don't really have a Windows installation in a wine prefix. You just have some DLL components and configuration files, you know, the bare minimum to get something to run. Usually, people make a new wine prefix for each game. This is done because configurations which make certain Windows games work beautifully can break others. So, it's good practice to give every single game its own prefix. Okay, so how do we make a prefix? Well, first we need to pick a game we want to play. In this guide, I will be setting up a prefix for Stalker Anomaly, a free standalone game you can download from ModDB. Once we've decided on the game, we will create a directory with a descriptive name. In this case, I will call my directory Anomaly Prefix. Once we have our directory, we will turn it into a wine prefix by running the following command. Once this window shows up, the prefix has been created and you can close the window. Now, to summarize, to create a wine prefix, you create a folder. Then you use the environment variable wine prefix to tell wine that you want the folder you created to be the prefix in which you want to run the program wine CFG. Running wine CFG creates your virtual Windows installation. After the graphical window of Wine CFG has appeared, the process is complete and you can close said window. Okay, you have your Wine prefix. Now you have to install the Windows DOL components which are required by the game. You can figure this out by looking up the redistributable files that you need to play the game. The ones I'm going to install in this video will be enough to run most DX9, DX10 and DX11 games, but your mileage may vary depending on which game you're playing. Okay, how do we install them? Well, we're going to be using Wine Tricks. To tell Wine Tricks where we want to install the components, we again are going to use the Wine Prefix variable and give it the path to the folder we created in the beginning. Then we're going to call Wine Tricks itself and now we have two options. Use the graphical version of Wine Tricks by just pressing enter or using Wine Tricks in the terminal by just typing the names of the components we want to install. I will now I'll show you both, since sometimes we have to use wine tricks from the terminal to make use of some extra flags. Now I will install .NET using the command line version of wine tricks. I will tell wine tricks that I want to install things in the prefix I created. I will then invoke wine tricks itself, give it the flag force, and then tell it to install .NET 4.8 and .NET 4.0. I installed these specific components using the command line because in the newer versions of Wine, .NET tends to fail to install unless you install it using the force flag. Now let's demonstrate the graphical way of installing Windows components. Type this command and run it. This graphical window will pop up and you're going to select the Select Default Wine Prefix option and click OK. 
In the next menu, select the Install a Windows DOL or Component and click OK. Here, just check the box in front of the components you want installed, click OK and wait for Winetrix to do its thing. I will put a list of the components and DOLs I installed in the description of this video. Once Winetrix is done, it will send you back to this menu and you can then just click Cancel until you exit Winetrix. Now we will set up DXVK. If you don't know what DXVK is already, DXVK is a translation layer which translates DX9, DX10 and DX11 to Vulkan. This is what allows us to play Windows games on Linux with good performance and, in some cases, better than Windows native performance. Before we start installing DXVK, make sure you have Git installed on your system. If you don't, then install it using your package manager, because you're going to need it. Now that you have Git installed, go to DXVK's GitHub page, link in the description, and clone it by copying this link and pasting it after the git clone command in your terminal. This will download the repository in your current working directory. I recommend running the cd command in your terminal before the git clone command to make sure you're in the home directory, so that you know where the repository is cloned. Now, change directory into the cloned DXVK directory and run the following command to compile DXVK. Once it's compiled, you're going to see the folder called DXVK master. CD into it and run the following command. We see again that we are specifying the prefix we want to work in and we are running the DXVK install script to install DXVK in said prefix. OK, I'm now going to move my game files into the prefix and I'm ready to run my game. I am first going to specify which prefix I want to run the game in. Then I'm going to invoke Wine and tell it to run the game's executable by pointing it to it. I will run this command and the game will launch. Brilliant! Now, let's talk about running extra stuff, like game mode, or using eSync or FSync, if the version of Wine you have supports them. So if you want to run things like game mode, or Mango Hood, or VK Basalt, etc., just put all the environment variables before invoking Wine. So I'm going to have Mango Hood, game mode, and some stuff with the graphics drivers before the wine prefix environment variable and then I'm going to uh, invoke wine again and run the exe file. See, we now have Mango Hood. Okay, how do you enable eSync or fsync? Well, to enable eSync, the environment variable is wine eSync equals one. For fsync, it's pretty much the same thing. Wine fsync equals one. And there you go. You have all the basics you need to run Windows games using Wine. This is all for this video. I hope you found it helpful. If you did find it helpful, consider obliterating that like button and subscribing for more Linux gaming content. See you in the next one.